please join me in welcoming to the CEU stage His Royal Highness Prince El Hassan bin Talal. John Shattuck, may I thank you for those more than generous words. I, I find it very difficult to go around uh, burdened by an accident of birth and uh, having to defend myself in terms of uh, apologizing for the many titles that I've accrued along the way. People seem to take more interest in my titles than they do in my thoughts. And in fact, it comes to a point where uh, uh, I get tired in the Arab world when they talk about the thoughtful prince, as though the two, uh, as though it to be thoughtful and the prince is an oxymoron. Uh, you know, I, I chair something called the Arab Thought Forum, and I say that's not an oxymoron. And I think that the cycle of destruction and rebirth that we've seen in uh, the past uh, decades might be put into a historical perspective. The post-colonial era, which, uh, of course, uh, led to the assassination of all those, practically, who were brave enough to talk about uh, thinking about their future. One saw prime ministers from Lebanon, Riyadh al-Sulh, God rest his soul, to uh, uh, Iran, Haj Ali Rasmara, to Adnan Menderes in Turkey, to uh, my family in uh, Iraq, not to mention my grandfather in Jerusalem, and uh, many others simply shunted out of uh, the picture uh, in the post-colonial era to be succeeded by the so-called uh, Arab nationalists. I was sitting next to King Hussein and uh, uh, Jamal Abdel Nasser in Cairo when a cable came through to say, say that Lieutenant Signals, that's wireless, you know, the army are, are accused of being generally uh, undiplomatic, but the wireless service sends and receives. So there must have been some sending and receiving because uh, Lieutenant Gaddafi drove past Wheelers Air Base with three decrepit armored cars with the American servicemen waving him on. And uh, I, I say this not uh, having been one of the people who um, um, uh, kowtowed to Gaddafi ever. In fact, the only occasion we met, uh, we had a a disagreement. He said to me, my flag is green because it is the color that will liberate Jerusalem. I said, well, the only occasion I recall the Muslims going into Jerusalem, the Abbasids, and they were carrying a black flag. After, after that, we never spoke again. <laughs> but uh, the point that I'm making is that the post-colonial era was largely responsible for this passion for nationalist, um, or neo-nationalist, if I may put it that way, uh, leadership. Now I suspect that there is a passion for bandwagoning the Jasmine Revolution uh, with, uh, and I'm talking about Tunisia, uh, the comparison with the Arab Spring came out of the Prague Spring, and as there was no Baslav Havel, as there was no uh, civil society movement. I think that the comparison with Tunisia uh, bears uh, further scrutiny. It is obvious that the people themselves, for a change, came out and asked for uh, change. Uh, of course, this change was encouraged uh, to a large extent by the poor governance of, of decades. Uh, poor governance explains uh, corruption, poor governance explains the uh, absence of adherence to constitutional uh, perspectives, to um, uh, free elections, uh, and indeed to the absence of policies or priorities. I, I don't talk about politics anymore because uh, uh, I've, walked, I've stepped out of Plato's cave, which in a sense makes me more vulnerable and in a sense makes me breathe more easily. I, I'm just fed up with the establishment in the Arab world, or at least those who are only interested in vested interest, uh, sticky fingers, um, and a host of other um, self-promoting uh, devices and exercises, which are really not to my taste nor uh, worth my time. The only people who are worth uh, concentrating on today are those citizens who wish to be empowered in developing a new reality. And new realities, of course, uh, are hard fought for. 
And that's why I'm here in uh, uh, Budapest, having just traveled from Bucharest and before that from Prague, to say that we need initiatives to build on our resourcefulness. I'm not important, you're all not important. In the context of which we are speaking, it is the people out there who are important. And empowering citizens is basically what brought me together with the Commission on the Legal Empowerment of the Poor, uh, chaired by Madeleine Albright. I have a lovely story about Madeleine. Of course, as you know, she is of Czech origin, and I believe the first time she met Václav Havel, he ran up to her, having learnt of her Czech origin, and said, so, such a great pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Fulbright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, all things bright and beautiful. We, we, <laughs> we, we produced a, a report on uh, uh, making the law work for everyone, the legal empowerment of the poor, which means stepping away from the traditions of patronage, so strongly embedded in our part of the world, uh, selectivity, and focusing on uh, the business rights, property rights, <coughs> and uh, the enablement of citizenship. I come from a country where I'm ashamed and humiliated to admit that 30% only of university students get there on merit. And this probably applies in many parts of, of the world. I mean, we talk about Bakshish and Wasta and uh, all of these things as though they're some kind of a, you know, um, um, a joke. Well, they're a pretty bad joke. And I would like to say that as far as Middle East is concerned, nomenclature has changed. I would like to refer to West Asia and North Africa. I, got, I participated in creating this MENA um, um, title, Middle East, North Africa, and I asked uh, Joe Biden and Senator Lugar at the time, I said, what do you mean by Middle East? They said, from Marrakesh to Bangladesh, from uh, Kaza to Calcutta. I said, well, that's, you know, rather encyclopedic, and, uh, uh, and it lacks seriousness. The fact is that the Arab League is crumbling, uh, the Organization Islamic Conference exactly is uh, uh, a firefighter. It met after the burning of the Aqsa Mosque in 1969. Uh, uh, but uh, we need a little bit more than that. I just came from the Islamic Academy of Science meeting in Doha, Qatar. And I want to say that there are three prominent American universities in, uh, oops, uh, Arab universities in our uh, uh, environment. The AUB the University of Petroleum and Mines in Dammam, and Kaus, the King Abdul Aziz, uh, the, forgive me, the King Abdullah ibn Abdul Aziz University of Science. So outsourcing these enormous facilities started with Roberts College, as we know, in, 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 in Turkey, and has brought a certain discipline to the region. But my quest uh, for developing the West Asia region is, uh, largely based on the importance of developing soft security, human security. So if we look at recent developments, much has changed since I visited you last here at CEU, uh, and I wish, uh, along with all the well-wishers, that uh, Yehuda Elkana will uh, uh, be here to talk to us at some stage in the future, although I recognize that he is passing through uh, a difficult time, and I'm, I'm sad uh, uh, to miss him uh, here at CEU. I'm delighted to meet you, and I, I, and I think it's to the credit of whoever uh, uh, arranges these things that uh, such remarkable figures are here today uh, in such a remarkable institution. You are bridge builders, in a sense, and I want to say that uh, in terms of uh, change, you came in with a mandate after the walls had fallen. In Egypt, however, a 30-year year regime was toppled in 18 days. It was not a process whereby civil society could have been encouraged by the various devices, including Radio Free Europe and everything that uh, went with it, including the allure of the West and everything that went with it, the allure of another uh, ideology and everything that uh, has gone with it up till only a few hours ago when we look at the uh, hope for a bailout package in uh, uh, Brussels, and when we talk about the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement, uh, I 
had thought that uh, somehow we in the uh, region uh, could have muddled through with uh, uh, the current uh, political military actions that have been uh, taking place. I, I was resigning myself to that in a sense, not that I pr appreciate the fact that uh, $12 trillion have been spent between 2003 and 2009 or whatever it is, according to the Mumbai-based foresight group that did uh, our forecasting. But uh, I didn't appreciate the fact that only military actions such as uh, the um, uh, American involvement in, in uh, Af Afghanistan, in Iraq, and uh, the questions about their aftermath. I mean, someone, a UN official was saying to me today, oh, well, we'll be withdrawing from Afghanistan uh, in a matter of whatever it is. And uh, I didn't ask the obvious question. There was no point in asking, well, what are you leaving behind for the Afghan people? In terms of Iraq, again, the, the question poses itself. It's all very well to talk about the nighttime raid and the death of Osama bin Laden. And, you know, I, I was in, uh, we've been so stereotyped. I was at the Royal Society of Edinburgh some time ago, and, and, and the uh, chancellor, whatever he was, the rector, forgive me, I mean, uh, you know, titles, and I shouldn't be wasted on people with titles, but uh, he stood up and he said, and he'd had a wee drum too many, Edinburgh, you know, <laughs> and uh, he said, on behalf of you all, I want to thank our guest of honor, Prince Hassan bin, bin, bin Laden. <laughs> so I said, you know, bin this, bin that, das bin, it doesn't really... <laughs> It's all like Mac or Fitz or whatever, depending on which side of the blanket you were born. But um, as far as the NATO focus on our region uh, is concerned, I see a sort of encroachment gradually developing uh, in the context of the Libya uh, mission. And I, I, I would insist on the importance of studying the West Asia uh, North Africa context, particularly coming from Bucharest, where uh, uh, Black Sea uh, matters, where now the Russians have taken over the uh, Black Sea Commission, and I see that the Black Sea is really an extension of the Eastern Mediterranean. We talk about Syria. Let us remember that um, the Russians have a, an interest in Tartus, the Syrian um, uh, port, that there are two Russian submarines in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, I'm surprised to hear that there is a shared field of gas of interest to Syria, Israel, and Cyprus. I stop there. I don't want to speculate. But war makes strange bedfellows, and oil makes stranger ones. So I, I would like to suggest to you that uh, in terms of our West Asia region, the uh, stage we are in is a stage of uh, searching for human dignity. Uh, I, I'll get into uh, the uh, Egyptian movement if you if, if you are interested in Q&A, but I don't want to start talking about centrifugal and centripetal forces unless you actually provoke me to do that. But uh, uh, another buzzword of the moment is uh, the um, transition to transition initiative, the T2T, not T4, T4, T4T, but T2T. Uh, <laughs> I want to say the transition is not always uh, easy and rarely is peaceful. I, I prefer the evolution concept, uh, evolution rather than revolution, but of course there should be some markers uh, for evolution. Uh, uh, trusted faces, uh, some form of a social contract, uh, some sort of real reliability and responsiveness in terms of uh, uh, leadership. However, today in our region, as in many regions of the world, we have uh, resource divides, we have uh, human and physical resource divides, we have digital divides, and uh, the um, term conservative is even suspicious. I mean, today the Tunisians were doing their best to explain that yes, we may have conservative leadership, but Sharia is not, does not mean that we're going to chop off um, various parts of our anatomy in terms of, uh, or anybody else's anatomy for that matter. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's almost like blaming the Code Napoleonic for uh, having used the guillotine. Uh, 